the DKIM strategy. DKIM is designed to provide an email authentication technique that is transparent to the end user. In a sense, a user's email message is signed by a private key of the administrative domain from which the email originates. The signature covers all the contents of the message and some of the RFC 5322 message headers. At the receiving end, the MDA can access the corresponding public key over a DNS and verify the signature, thus authenticating that the message comes from a claimed administrative domain. Thus, mail that originates from somewhere else but claims to be from a given domain will not pass the authentication test and can be easily rejected. This approach differs from that of the SMIME as well as PGP, which uses the originator private key to sign the content of the message. The motivation for DKIM is based on the following reasons. SMIME depends on both the sending and receiving users employing SMIME for almost all users. The bulk of incoming mail does not use SMIME and the bulk of the mail the user wants to send is to recipients not using SMIME. SMIME signs only the message content. Thus, RFC 5322 header information concerning origin can be compromised. DKIM is not implemented in clients programs that is MUAs and is therefore transparent to the user. The user needs to take no action. DKIM applies to all mail from corporating domains. DKIM allows good senders to prove that they send a particular message and to prevent forgers from masquerading as good senders. The figure here is a simple example of the operation of DKIM. We begin with the message generated by a user and transmitted into the MHS to an MSA that is within the user's administrative domain. An email message is generated by an email client program. The contents of the message plus selected RFC 5322 header is signed by email provider using the provider's private key. The signer is associated with a domain which could be a corporate local network, an ISP, or a public email facility such as Gmail. The signed message then passes through the internet via a sequence of MTAs. At the destination, the MDA retrieves the public key from the incoming signature and verifies the signature before passing the message on to the destination email client. The default signing algorithm used is RSA with SHA-256. RSA with SHA-1 may also be used. The DKIM functional flow. Figure provides a more detailed look at the elements of DKIM operation. Basic message processing is divided between a signing administrative management domain ADMD and a verifying ADMD. At its simplest, this is between the originating ADMD and the delivering ADMD. But it can involve other ADMDs in the handling path. Signing is performed by an authorized module within the signing ADMD and uses private information from a key store. Within the originating ADMD, this might be performed by MUA, MSA or an MTA. Verifying is performed by an authorized module 
within the verifying ADMD within a delivering ADMD verifying might be performed by an MTA MDA or MUA the module verifies the signature or determines whether a particular signature was required verifying the signature uses public information from the key store if the signature passes reputation information is used to assess the signer and that information is passed to the message filtering system if the signature fails or there is no signature using the author's domain information about signing practices related to the author can be retrieved remotely and or locally and that information is passed to the message filtering system for example if the sender gmail uses dkim but no dkim signature is present then the message may be considered as fraudulent the signature is inserted into the rfc 5322 message as an additional header entry starting with the keyword dkim signature you can view examples from your own incoming mail by using the view long header or something similar to this option for an incoming message before a message is signed a process known as canonicalization is performed on both the header and body of the rfc 5322 message canonicalization is necessary to deal with the possibility of minor changes in the message made en route including character encoding treatment of trailing white space in the message line and folding and unfolding of header lines the intent of canonicalization is to make a minimal transformation of the message for the purpose of signing the message itself is not changed so the canonicalization must be performed again by the verifier that will be it its best chance of producing the same canonical value of the receiving end dkim defines two header canonicalization algorithms one is the simple and the other one is called relaxed and two for the body again one is simple and the other one is relaxed the simple algorithm tolerates almost no modification while the relaxed tolerates common modifications the signature includes a number of fields each field begins with a tag consisting of a tag code followed by an equal sign and it ends with a semicolon in this module we have come across the three main topics pretty good privacy is mine and dkim under pretty good privacy we had a look on notation operational description of pgp and so on under smine we studied rfc 5322 multi purpose internet mail extensions smine functionality smine messages smine certification processing and enhanced security services finally we had a look at dkim and what we saw internet mail architecture email threats dkim strategy dkim functional flow thank you